Students, welcome to Chapter 2 of CIS 244, Analyzing the Business Case from Systems Analysis and Design. So let's take a look at the first part of Chapter 2. So during this, we'll explain these outcomes. I'll go ahead and you can pause this if you want. I am going to have you do a SWOT analysis, so look for that. Here's the others. You can pause if you'd like. And we'll just jump right in. So what is a business case? Well, many things can be called a business case, but in the case of IT and systems analysis and design, I like this definition the best. A business case is an argument, usually documented, that is intended to convince a decision maker to approve some kind of action. So the document itself is sometimes referred to as the business case. So this is going to explain the who, what, where, when, how, and why. So a complete business case covers those elements. Let me say those again. Who, what, where, when, how, and why a decision should be made. So these can be fairly simple things. They could be very complex. They could be hundred, hundreds of pages in length, you know, depending on the size of the project, the degree of the project, etc. So there's the definition. So a lot of times when we talk about business cases, we might start if we don't if we're not familiar with the with the business to do a business profile. Again, answering those questions. Who the business is? What is it the business does? You know, where do they do it? Why do they do it? How do they do it? Those kind of things. So analysts must consider companies mission objectives and IT needs. As we take on IT projects, we have to go ahead and parallel those with the business. Is this going to improve the business of business's efficiency? Is it going to save cost? Is it something that government is requiring us to do and we have no choice? It's just the business we're in, say aviation. You know, we have to put in a new system as we build airplanes to document mistakes that are made or things that aren't exactly to spec, for example. That may be a system that we just have to put into place. So the process starts with the system's request. Now, a system's request can come from the end user. It can come from management. It can even come from IT who says, you know what? We have this old server. We actually need a new server, and we have to go through the IT process, the systems analysis process, to justify the expense and to show that the new server is going to perform better, maybe more reliable. It might even save cost over the old server, even as we go and maintain it and back it up and license it and do all those things. So we do a preliminary investigation of that request. First of all, is it feasible? Second of all, we gather the facts, not what we think them to be, but facts as to how we might do it, why we might do it, why even we might not take on this project. IT departments get way more projects than they can ever take on. Um, so we have to prioritize those. And it's not up to IT and the systems analysts to prioritize them. It's to go back to management and say, do these projects meet our mission? Do they meet our objectives? Are they meeting our short-term or our long-term goals? All of those things need to be considered. And then finally, we are going to document. You're going to hear me talk about documentation a lot. Your first two assignments in this class, you're doing documentation. Looking for, are you using bullet points? Is it easy to read? Are you writing war and peace, you know, when a simple paragraph would do? You know, who, what, where, when, how, and why? Keep it short. Keep it simple. So, strategic planning overview. Again, starts with a mission statement. Now, most of the time when you think of mission statements, and I would ask you to pause, go out, look at the mission statement for Microsoft. Look at the mission statement for Apple. Look at the mission statement for Facebook. Look at those technology mission statements. Here, we can be talking about something as simple as to have a mission statement for a project. One or two lines that explains why we're doing the project, who we're doing it, how it's going to benefit the company, you know. Continues with goals and objectives and long-term and short-term goals. So, you know, we have short-term management. We have long-term management, you know, looking at where the company should be five years from now compared to where they should just be 
five days or five months from now. So just something to consider. So what is a SWOT analysis? Well, again, I'm going to have you practice this. So listen up. A SWOT analysis is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. When we get in an IT request, we might actually do an internal SWOT analysis. If we're starting a business, we're going to do an external SWOT analysis. We're going to look, let's say we started, a, I don't know, a pizza company in Bend. Well, what's our strength in starting that? What are the weaknesses? What are the opportunities for starting a business like that? And what are the threats? So, you know, weaknesses, you know, oh, gee, I don't know how to make a good pizza. That would be a weakness. An opportunity, an opportunity might be, you know, personal growth, um, more personal income. I have somebody that's willing to finance the business and take a smaller percentage than normal, whatever threats. Well, clearly in band, a threat would be how many other competitors we have. How do they do it? What makes them unique? So when we talk about this, what makes Pizza Hut different than Sibeli's? You know, you're not going to get a Pizza Hut price at Sibeli's. Why not? What makes it unique? But why is it Sibeli's is still in business selling a bunch of pizzas? What is it their customers are after that they're not getting from Pizza Hut or getting from a chain? It's those kind of things we discuss. So strengths, you know, how we can use them to achieve our business goals. Weaknesses, how they might reduce or eliminate them. You know, could I get some education? Should I go work for a pizza joint for a while before I go opening my own pizza business? That kind of thing. I'm really simplifying this and I mean to do that on purpose. Opportunities. So how do we plan to take advantage of those opportunities? You know, uh, maybe it's the fact that somehow we were able to garner some prime real estate for our pizza business. It is surrounded by uh, companies that work Monday through Friday. It's in walking distance. You know, it's a prime location. That might be an opportunity, right? And we know we don't want to necessarily be open. We just want to be open in afternoons and evenings. Okay, well, you know, we're going to get that afternoon crowd. They're not going to have to drive, you know, that kind of thing. So threats, you know, how can we assess threats? How do we manage them, respond to them? When we talk about an IT project and we do these, well, strengths would be, who do we have on the project? Are there people we're missing and weaknesses? If we're doing a database and we don't have someone who programs databases or really understands them, that's going to be a weakness. What's the opportunity in doing the project? Oh, we're going to you know, create this database and it's going to save X amount of time. And hey, it might even get rid of you know, half of this person's job so that they can go do this, which they're more of an expert at. And we're going to automate the process. What are the threats? Well, a lot of times with IT projects, threats are the loss of an employee, a knowledge-based employee, say halfway through the project. How would we deal with that? Maybe somebody's planning on taking vacation. Maybe somebody knows that so-and-so, who is the key programmer on our project, is unhappy, is starting to look for another job. Would that affect our project if they left halfway through? You bet it would. So these are all things that we consider. Now, in the, in the analysis that I'll give you, We'll do an analysis on a little IT business. What if you were an IT person? Look at your own personal strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats and starting a little consulting business here in Central Oregon. You know, look at your strengths. What are the weaknesses? Go out and do some research. Are there some opportunities? You know, do you have some particular set of IT skills that uh, people don't seem to have or don't seem to be marketing here in Central Oregon? So... You'll do that together as a group in a Google Doc this week. So strategic planning, a dynamic process that starts with a mission statement. Yeah, shaped by the firm's purpose, vision, values. Everything we do comes back to business. It's not, gee, that would be cool technology to have. Let's go spend a bunch of money and see if we can make it work. No, that's not, that's not the point here. The point here is how is it going to meet business needs? How is it going to increase revenue, decrease expenses. Those are all the things we need to look at. So, you know, strengths. So here's an example, you know, of a corporate patent. Well, you know, our patent covers valuable technology that we can use in popular products. So, so that's a competitive advantage for us. We have the patent. Nobody can steal these ideas. They can't use those ideas. 
without us. And if they do decide to use it, well, maybe we can license it out. So that's another strength. Weakness, so the patent has a limited life. You know, it expires. The technology will no longer be protected, which means we have a short period of time in which to take advantage of our exclusivity uh, as it pertains to the patent. Moving over to opportunities, so we can use technology and more products, license it, there it is, license it to others or seek more patents based on the patent we have. So we can sort of lock that up. We can be the only one in the industry that's able to do that kind of thing, whatever that thing is. So threats, a competitor might develop similar technology that does not legally infringe on our patent, meaning they find a different way to do what it is that our patent gives us exclusivity to do. So that would be a quick analysis, just a quick one on a corporate patent. So strategic planning, well, boy, We've already heard this word, right? Plan, plan, plan. The more we plan, the easier our execution will be, the better our results will be. It's when we fail to plan that we're gonna end up with surprises in a project. So one thing I'm gonna have you blog on is, I want you all to do some research. How many IT projects today fail? What percentage of IT projects that are started today literally fail, are spending companies money, spending time, investing human resources, and they just never come to fruition. So look for that as well. So in this case, does the project support the overall business strategy and operation strategy? Again, sometimes though projects, we just simply have to take them on due to federal or state regulation. So project scope, well-defined and clearly stated. We want to look for scope creep. We do want to think outside of the project. We want to look at the bigger project. Is there something we can do in addition? Is, you know, if we're talking about building a web-based application, well, you know, can we extend it somehow uh, into the company or extend it to do more for customers, those kind of things. But again, it needs to be clearly stated. And just because the project says, hey, let's build an iPhone today, Maybe all we need is something that can play music today, but we're going to build it into a device that can be programmed to do more tomorrow. So that's thinking in the future. Project goals, are they realistic? Are they achievable? You know, tied to specific statements, assumptions, constraints. So this is in no way meant to be offensive. This is meant, what I'm about to say is meant to give you a clear idea so I remember when I was in school, my systems analysis teacher would use the example from life. Just because one woman can have a baby in nine months does not mean that nine women would be able to have a baby in a month. And that really does clear it up. I mean, that's a great example of constraints. There's realistic constraints on projects, on our ability to create things, etc. So Again, are they tied? Do we have some assumptions? We want to be careful of assumptions. You've heard that word. Constraints. Do we have the right people? Do we have enough time? Do we have enough financial resources? You know, just we really need to look at all the factors surrounding the success of a project. So some analysts use traditional text-based methods. You know, we can use Microsoft Word, we can use Excel, we can create a spreadsheet of say the pros and the cons and even go as far as to do a risk matrix. You know, we might have a risk that's that's small and impacts the project hugely in time. We might have something that's big, but really, oh, you know, so and so leaves, we can replace so and so within two weeks, and this is a 18 month project, so we should be okay there. But here's this other key person, our systems analyst, for example, who has all this knowledge in their head. If they leave, it might set the project back months. It might even cause the project to fail. Most effective approach, use case tools such as visible analyst. Again, anything we can do that creates a graphical result of a step within the software development life cycle, for example, means that we're producing good documentation that somebody can read, they can review, okay? So, you know, framework here, 
Microsoft Project is a, is a good one as well. So each planning statement is assigned a statement type in Visible Analyst. Um, you might want to download and play with Visible Analyst. So how does all this affect IT? It used to be, gee, if you needed a computer, you contacted IT. Now it's, well, we need this specific computer for this. We're the experts. We're going to go out and do a project. We're going to figure out what we need, and IT is just going to be there from the technical and feasibility standpoint of the technology. So new role for IT department. Yeah, management and IT are linked closely. Remarkable changes have occurred in both areas. Yeah, it's no longer, you know, that computer nerd sitting behind the desk, people wondering what the heck they do. That computer nerd is now in the boardroom. They're in these management meetings. They're aware of the future goals, the short-term, long-term goals. They're asking questions like, does this meet our company's mission statement? Can this improve on our mission? Does it benefit our mission? Is it going to benefit our clients? Those kind of things. So uh, systems development is much more team oriented. We're getting everyone involved because the challenge in getting everyone involved, of course, is now we have a bunch more opinions. We need a systems analyst who can manage those, who can decipher those, who can translate between the, the technical staff and the business staff. So team oriented is the norm. Some companies, yeah, still use the IT department to basically say, here it is. What do you think? Can we get it done? Larger firms more likely to use an evaluation team or systems review committee. Yes, they are. That's the idea of, you know, I've worked for companies that were large where management was certainly involved in doing those feasibility as project ideas would come in. We would all sit down and say, okay, here's the ideas we have. Let's prioritize them. Let's figure out who can work on what and what we might want to set aside. So business case refers to the reasons or justification for the proposal. Should, should be comprehensive and yet easy to understand. When we write a business case and there's a strong ability to support the case, the stronger the ability to support the case, both tangibly and intangibly, the more apt we are to take on that business project and do it. So the project you know, is described clearly, the justification is there, the estimate of the project's financial impact. So you can see that we might spend a lot of time figuring out what the heck the project is going to produce, how much it's going to cost, what kind of time, what kind of resources. So here's those things. Why are we doing the project? What is the project about? How does this solution address key business issues? How does it meet our mission statement? How does it meet short or long-term goals? How much will it cost? That's what management wants to know. How much will it cost? And then of course, is the cost exceeded by the benefit? Meaning if we're gonna spend $100,000 to do this this year, but the system's going to work for four years and essentially produce $50,000 in savings, for example, each year. Well, that's $200,000. So we're going to be down $100,000 from the project. It's going to make $200,000, but maybe there's another project that can make more money that might be a priority. So we need to calculate that kind of stuff. How long will it take? Well, with technology today, one of the biggest challenges with technology is we implement technology today and it becomes obsolete tomorrow. So the question is, do we have 18 months or do we only have six months to make this thing up and run, make it profitable because in 12 months we know there's gonna be a technology change. Will we suffer a productivity loss during the, the transition? So a great example of that would be at one point, we replaced a system that ran a whole company. And in doing so, we converted as much data as we could. But what we found out is the new system didn't work as advertised. It was down a lot. We ended up finding out we were sort of the beta tester for this company and it wasn't a place we wanted to be in. It hurt productivity. Every time we got a new update, it broke something. People couldn't work. How bad did it get? So bad that in 16 months of being on the, on the new system, 
we actually ported data back into the old system and tried to find a new system. Now, why did that happen? Because we failed to plan. It was the fact that a business manager said, here's the new system. It's from the company that we've used before. We're just going to put it in. We're just going to use it. There was no project done. There was no feasibility. There was no time. Nobody did any research. As a matter of fact, the big key to me was when the manager handed me a disk for the new software. It was for Linux, and re we ran Windows. So that was kind of a key. Uh-oh, we're in, we're in some serious trouble here. So business case should answer the questions. You know, what is our return on investment? Again, remember that other project. Well, we we're going to spend 100000 but it was going to make us 200000 And we knew those numbers to be exact. Well, there we go. The return on investment is 100000 over four years. What's the payback period? Well, the payback period to go to zero was two years. But then we were going to run it for three and four years, and it was going to make money. So what are the risks in doing a project? What are the risks in not doing a project? Again, sometimes federal and state regulations come down with you have you know two years to do this or we're going to start fining you or increase your taxes because you're not a green company, for example. So how will we measure success? Well, we do an audit. This is the key that tends to be missing a lot in IT projects is we finish the project, we implement it, boom, we're done. We never go back and audit to make sure that what we estimated the value of the project to be is actually what we receive. So, and finally, that big question, the alternatives. Are there alternatives? Usually there are alternatives to everything we do. We may not like the alternatives, but the fact is one alternative is to do nothing, to not take on a project. It is an alternative, especially if we have other projects going. So consider that. That alternative of is today the day the project should stop. That is an alternative. So main reasons for requests, so improve service, support new products and services, maybe offer a new product line, better performance in manufacturing, better performance in delivering information out to our customers. You know, imagine the impact. Just go look at how many transactions Amazon does a day and then figure out what happens if we could take five seconds, just five seconds off of each transaction at Amazon by doing some different project. So factors that affect systems projects, one internal, so the strategic plan. Well, if the st strategy changes, our project may not meet the strategy anymore. They may decide to take the company in a completely different area and we were doing projects that no longer matter. Top manager, user requests, information technology department. Yes, we can affect projects, both positively and negatively. Existing systems or data. So the idea that, you know, are we gonna have to convert the data? We really never wanna run two IT systems because the problem with that is if we don't get users over and using just the new system, They'll go back and get the information from the old system, even if that means putting in information that doesn't exist in the old system. Why? Because they're comfortable. So external factors, you know, technology. Think about the iPod. You know, when Bill, when uh, Steve Jobs set out to do the iPod, a lot of the technology in there wasn't yet designed and developed. That's what Apple had to do to build that sit-in-your-pocket MP3 player. Suppliers, for example, can affect customers. Let me give you a great example of a external factors where customers, so we start building a product line or maybe a piece of software and we're working on the software and one of our competitors comes out and beats us to market by 30 days. And all the customers that we thought would use our software are suddenly already using our competitors. So there's competitors that expect affecting external factors. The economy plays a part. Just think about our last recession. You know, external factors to projects. Well, you know, during the recession, our classes at COCC were full. We had wait lists of more people than the class that were registered in the class, for example. Um, as the economy turned, fewer people were going to school, which meant fewer resources, 
for us to increase the technology that helps us teach, for example, and then government for sure. So information systems projects. So just a graphic of what affects projects. It's the same stuff we just talked about. So you can look at this external, you know, technology, meaning technology that we don't have. OK, or something changes on the Internet. HTML5 comes out. And we were programming in four, for example. Government says we need to do something. Gee, we can't get the technology we need or parts we need from suppliers. There's a shortage, a worldwide shortage of something. Thus, we can't produce our airplane unless, you know, the glass manufacturer can get the materials they need to, to build, say, the, you know, the windscreen, for example. Competitors, economy, and then inside, you know, our strategic plan changes. It's the same thing we just looked at. So evolution of systems requests. So I'm going to stop right here. This will be part one, and we'll start with evolution of systems requests when we come back for part two. Take care.